Hi, my name is Caitlin Ruggieri, and I'm going to be analyzing Monster Energy Drink. So, for our overview, just want to go through a target market consumer decision process, um, learning, attitudes, uh, suggestions for more research. Um, we'll quickly summarize and go into questions. So the target market that I found for Monster Energy Drink um, is really comprised of males, younger males, 18 to 34, who attended college. They have a low, uh, lower household income, so they're considered low class. Um, they have construction jobs, really hands-on. They're very, they're single. They have no children. Um, they live in cities out in the West, and they're very mobile. And they're really overall interested in high endurance, extreme sports, um, staying active, and living a really fast-paced life. So problem rec recognition, this is the gap between actual state, um, which for in this case for this consumer would probably be that they're tired, and desired state, which is their desire to be energetic. Um, next is the information, information search. This includes two different kinds of search, internal and external. Um, internally, first they search uh, to see if a solution was found before. Have they had a monster before? Did it work? And um, if that doesn't work out, then they move to external. Externally, they search. Uh, they have search characteristics such as uh, color and package, and they also have experience characteristics like taste and smell. Um, next, they move on to alternative evaluation. This is where determinant attrib attributes are really important. Um, those are the attributes that the consumer won't budge on. So for this person, um, maybe it is the amount of caffeine. They might need a lot of caffeine so that they feel um, more energetic. Um, also, you want Monster to be in the evoked set, which means it's a brand that is considered for purchase. Next step is purchase. Um, our consumer moves in into purchase with a generally planned purchase, which means they go to the store. They know they want an energy drink. They just don't know what exact brand they want. This comes with different perceived risks like physiological, which means that they might um, might be nervous that the drink might hurt them. And post-purchase, you really want cognitive consistency, which means that that gap of uh, tired and energetic or actual and desired state is closed and new knowledge is gained and hopefully satisfaction and a loyal customer. Um, the next slide is just an example ad for information search. Um, it would be considered this step because Monster is really uh, advertising the benefits of a Monster Energy Drink. They're really showing Unleash the Beast. So uh, Unleash the Beast is uh, kind of like you're going to get all this energy. So next is the learning. Um, I got all of this information from primary sources. So I interviewed five different people and I came up with that consumers really don't look to energy drinks when they're tired. They look to soda, Gatorade, coffee. Um, energy drinks are available, but they really don't turn to it right away. Um, that means that there's an opportunity for Monster. Um, there's semantic memory and effective attributes that people really uh, gravitated towards. People mentioned that their mom bought them soda, that their brother had them try it. Um, one person even mentioned that he tried uh, soda when he was in Boy Scout. So all of these things were connected to the other products and we want Monster to be connected um, in the similar way. Um, so again, there's an opportunity for Monster Energy Drink. Maybe they could uh, gain these people through vicarious learning, maybe giving out free samples at the X Games or something, just so that people can observe other people trying the product. Also, there's classical conditioning. Um, these are ads that you pair a product with popular um, items such as music, and this will maybe make people think, oh, I hear this song on the radio, it reminds me, oh, I'm going to go get a Monster Energy drink. I also got um, a little insight on the attitudes of Monster uh, consumers. Um, their attitudes are externally formed, so they're really through personal experience, mass media, and influence of their family. And there's three different types, um, three different uh, parts of attitude, cognitive, affective, and cognitive. The cogn cognitive part is really about um, the drink is very dependable. The affective is uh, that it's seen really more for other products, not really monster, so that's something that they can uh, work on. And also cognitive. Um, Monsters should really look to improve upon the intention to buy as well.
So lastly, I just have some suggestions for research. Um, I think there should be more interpretive information found um, mainly on attitude uh, association and mostly perception because there is a poor perception towards um, energy drinks as you can see in the picture. People think that energy drinks are really dangerous if you google it. You know, there's a lot of news stories about people um, misusing it so if if Monster could battle that and they could figure out how to make the perception better then they're going to have the brand in people's minds more often. In summary, Monster has a really good opportunity to become a go-to product for consumers when they need some energy, they need that pick-me-up, and um, they could really gain a loyal following. So, any questions? And thank you.